Welcome to Erudite. Today we'll be using Python to code up a little program that sorts numbers, but in a nice simple way. All the code will be posted on GitHub with plenty of comments, and let's get started! Let's begin with a basic problem. An array of numbers that are unsorted, and you can see a nice list of 10 numbers that are not sorted. So how are we going to sort this out? We'll first keep it tidy, define a nice little function, and we can call it basic, like basic sort. And it will take the array we need to sort as an argument. And just to check that everything is working nicely, let's print out this array. And don't forget we'll need to call the function and pass that array to the function and we'll get Python to run this. I have an interesting setup uh, with a programming environment on a USB uh, but I end up t <laughs> typing the path out like this. Now I make a mistake here because this is my second time filming this that I didn't save the file so we get an odd output but don't worry saving the file and trying again works so that's why you'll see a little bit of a jump cut. <laughs> So if we run our program, we get the array printed out and everything seems to be working well. Now within this little function, we are going to have to do a couple of bits of logic. The first is to tell us when we have finished sorting the list, so we can return a nice sorted array. The second bit of logic that will compare between the numbers in the array and swap them if needed. So we'll start with the first bit of logic as it's nice and easy. We can declare a variable called sort and it'll be false because everything isn't sorted yet. And while sort is false, so we'll initiate a while loop, we'll do something. And you know I'll just pop that in there so that we we know that we're doing something. But for now, we'll just pass here. And it's important that then, once it's all true in the loop, it'll exit the loop, and so we can return the sorted array. So that should all be sorted once we exit that loop. You could also do this with a nested function, like a number checking function, but I think a while loop will do the job nicely and make our code more readable. So, now we have this space here, and we need to set up our logic for processing the numbers. We need to iterate through each number in our array, and we can achieve this with a range function. For i in range 0 to the length of the array, oh hello, don't forget the colon, Oh dear. Print i and check that we are working through the array properly. Oh, and we'll need to exit the loop, otherwise it'll just run forever. So over in the terminal, let's see. Yep, we've printed out the index positions for our array from 0 to 9. Now I think the best way to do this is to make sort equal to true in our while loop. And if we make any change where we switch a set of numbers, we set it our sort to false. So if we enter this loop and don't make any change, it stays true, we exit the loop and return the sorted array. So let's have a little think about what we're going to do in here. When i is at zero, we are sat here. So we can say that if array at i is bigger than the i plus 1, the 6, then we want to switch them. Now, if it's bigger, we can switch them with a nice little operator. 
where you can say that array at position i, comma, array position i plus 1 will be equal to the array at i plus 1, comma, the array at i. And this is a really nice, elegant little bit of code just to get them all to switch places. Now, I've made the font a, a bit bigger, but we don't have a huge amount of space to code in the IDE. Um, so, if we've done a change, then sort can't be true anymore. So we'll set sort equal to false. Now, let's see how this is working. We'll run one iteration of this loop, and then print the array, and exit. Let's save that, and we'll just tidy up the terminal uh, with CLS, a very useful command, then we'll rerun this code. Aha! That is an error I should have been aware of. I plus 1 is out of re ah. So, at the end of our array, we're asking the program to compare to i plus 1, but there isn't anything there at that position. So we need to change our range to from 0 to length of the array minus 1. So we don't want to go all the way to the end of the array, but we want to go to the end minus 1. Let's rerun this code. Oh, uh, I also should have included the original ray, so it's easier to compare. Let's print that out as well. There we go. Lovely. So this is much better. We can see both the original array and the first iteration of the sort. So what's happened during this first iteration? Well, 4 isn't bigger than 6, so 4 hasn't changed places. 6 is bigger than 2, so they have switched, but it isn't bigger than 9, so it stayed in place. The 9 is then the biggest in the array, and gets switched to every place until it gets to the end of the list. That's very nice, so I'm going to get rid of the exit, and see what happens if we run through the entire sort. Let's save that and run it. So you can see, this is our original array, and if you look down the right-hand side, we can see how the algorithm is working. It's shifting the biggest number to the end in each iteration, until you have an ordered list. So, we have a working sort. However, there are a couple of things we can tidy up in this implementation. Firstly, we can introduce the proper name for this sort, which is bubble sort. Now, I'm not an expert in this area, so please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. So we'll rename this function bubble sort. But that's just a little semantic issue. It's not really sorting the code. The second thing is, every time we cycle this while loop, we are iterating through the whole list, which is inefficient. We know, after the first cycle, that the number at the end of the list is the largest, so we don't need to look at that position again. And that repeats for every cycle. So for every cycle, we can decrease the list length that we are looking at. So, let's create a variable called cycle, which we'll set equal to zero, and we'll subtract that from the length of the array in our function. So the function will not change um, in the first loop, but we'll increment the cycle by one, so it's steadily decreasing the length of the list we're looking at. Now this might not seem important for our example array here, but if the list had a thousand elements, 
that improvement starts to make a big difference and we'll have a look at that in a minute. So is there anything else we can do to tidy this up? I'm pretty pleased with this little function. Um, we can get rid of the print here and tidy up our outputs so they could potentially be a nice F string. We'll call this one uh, uh, unsorted array. Let's and if we're going to look at big arrays, we don't want to print out everything. So we'll just see the first ten elements. We can copy this and we can say the sorted array just like before and we want to change that to test so let's have a look at what this looks like here we go lovely so we've got our unsorted and our sorted and that is really nice. Now this is a really simple array here so we're going to do now is have a look at something a bit more complicated. So let's comment out the example array and we're going to import uh, rand int from random or random integer from random and we're going to create some test arrays using the random library. Uh, but let's just tidy this up a bit. You always want to keep your code as tidy as possible because you'll find it so much easier to go back to a tidy project. We're going to use a bit of list comprehension here to simply and efficiently generate our array. It's very clear so in this array we're going to say that I want to use this random function to generate a number between 0 and 100. How many elements do I want in this array? Well, for i in range 100. So we've created a random list of 100 elements with each element being some number between 0 and 100. That's our array that will be passed to our bubble sort function. So let's have a look at our output in the terminal. So we have our first 10 elements of our random array and here's the sorted array which we can see even from only 10 elements that it's being sorted. In fact to convince you let's have a look at a whole one but I might make this a bit smaller say 50 uh, actually maybe 20 there we go. Let's run that there you go. You can see the whole sequence and it's been sorted really nicely. Oh, I did want to say as well, you can of course, instead of using i in range, you could use enumerate. But I just thought it was cleaner to focus on the index position with i when you're sorting the numbers. Because we're interested really in which index we're switching and not so much the actual value just whether that value is greater or lesser than. So let's go back to only printing the first 10 elements of each array because we're going to time how long this function takes. Uh, let's keep it nice and tidy and let's import, so we'll do it from the top, that's right, we'll import time, quite magical. Now let's create a simple tester where 
start is equal to time dot time so we record the time at that instance and the end is equal to time dot time at that instance after we've run the function and we can do a simple calculation for runtime of end minus start and we can print that nicely to give a runtime for our test but we we'll, can also use the f string to add s for seconds as well so at 20 elements in the array I doubt we can even time it like this because it's so fast yes there in the terminal I didn't it didn't even register a time difference but let's increase to 500 and let's run that you can see it's taking about 40 milliseconds which is pretty fast however this algorithm is not fast 500 elements should not take that long to sort so let's see how it does with 5,000 elements. Oh, it's going slow. So it took four seconds to sort 5,000 elements. So I completely forgot to go through something which is to do with how the cycle implementation affects the runtime. So what I'm going to do now is I've set this to 5,000 and it's an array of 5,000 elements and we're going to comment out the cycle and see what happens to the runtime. It's yes, so the cycle's zero, it's like it's not doing anything. So let's see how long this takes to run. Oh, you can see it's taking a fair bit of time. So it took about six seconds. Let's do another one just to make sure that we've got a, a reasonable result. And you can see uh, 5.9. Yeah, it's six seconds again. Let's add the cycle back in. Let's see. There. Four seconds. It's taking a third off the runtime. Let's try it again. And if we run it, there, four seconds again. So it's taking a third of the total runtime, or is without the cycle, it takes half as long again. So that's a huge increase in efficiency with the cycle implementation. Not that anyone is going to use bubble sort as an efficient sort. <laughs> Another quick point I want to make, if you flip this sign you change the order of your um, sort. I mean, it's obvious from the maths, but you go from largest to smallest instead of smallest to largest. Uh, I just quite enjoyed that, really. <laughs> the kind of sort we've been looking at today, it's not the most efficient, but it is intuitive, and that's really helpful in an introduction to these kind of algorithms. Now, I learn by coding and playing around at my computer, just like we've done in this video. So if you like to learn like that, perhaps you want to follow along and try coding as I code. Thank you so much for watching, and if you've got this far into the video, you really must have enjoyed it. So why not like, comment, and subscribe? Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye!